Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Sides and this course is Principles or Rules of Macroeconomics. We are in Chapter 10, Measuring a Nation's Income, specifically GDP. And this segment of the lecture will be, we will discuss the components of GDP, specifically the formula that is used to calculate GDP so that when you are listening to the news and you hear the GDP rate for third quarter, second quarter, or for 20, uh, 2012, when you hear that statistic, you know what went into generating that number. Again, GDP is, or gross domestic product, is total income and total expenditures, they must equal. And the components of GDP, there are four components. We will look at each one of them. The first component is consumption. The second is investment. The third is government purchases. The fourth is net exports. And the formula that we will use is Y or GDP or income is denoted by the letter Y. So when you see Y in economics, think income. So Y or income or GDP is equal to the sum of consumption and investment and government purchases and net exports. Now let's dissect this formula. Consumption. Consumption is total spending by households. So when you, every time you and I make purchases for goods, for services, GNS, goods and services, those amounts are totaled up for a given time period for all of those products, all of those final products that are made in the United States. And when we add up all of the consumption with the other components, that's how we get GDP. Everything that you buy, except for your home, is included in, G in the consumption portion of GDP. If you rent a, your apartment or you rent your home, that's included in GDP under consumption. But your mortgage, when you become homeowners, does not uh, fall under consumption. It falls under another component, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Also, when we talk about consumption, we, um, there are two different types of goods. There are durable goods. Those are goods, and goods that we buy that um, last longer than three years. The examples of that would be a washer and dryer. It would be a refrigerator. It could be your bed or your, your sofa. Any type of good that you will use over and over again or over a time period of three or more years is considered a durable good. If you listen to again to the news, to the business segment, there is actual there is an actual economic indicator that is called durable good. And they'll say that the uh, price, the, I'm sorry, not the price, but manufacturing of durable goods is up. And that just means that we are manufacturing or producing those goods that would take three or more, more years to consume. And then the second type of goods would be the non-durable or soft goods. And those are goods that last long, less than three years and or we only use one time. For example, when you go, ladies, when you go to the beauty shop to get your hair done, that service is a non-durable good because that service is provided one time and it is consumed immediately. Um, cell phones are considered non-durable goods, not because we don't keep them for three years, but the technology that went into it is, is only good, is good less than three years. And so we would consider a cell phone a non-durable or soft good, whereas we would consider a dishwasher, a washer machine, 
a sofa, dining table, refrigerator as hard or durable goods. The next component in the calculation for GDP includes investment. Here, investment is not, we're not using the finance term investment, which is an asset, stocks, bonds, um, mutual funds. We're not talking about that type of an investment. That, from an economic standpoint, is a verb. Here, we're talking about those items that businesses use in order to run, and it also includes the home that you will purchase, not the home you rent. And those are uh, what we consider investment. The third component is government purchases. Remember in the first segment, we talked about the uh, circular flow and we showed the household and we showed the firm and I told you that what was omitted was government. The government function has two functions. One, they create policies that will encourage or disencourage spending and, uh, and, ex and, and expenditures and revenue. But then they also act as a participant in the market as a consumer. Government purchases include state, local, regional, and national government bodies. And it is anything that the government will purchase, not including transfer payments. Now, when we talk about transfer payments, in uh, if you're listening to the news, you'll hear political parties talk about socialist, uh, socialism or social, uh, socialist agendas. Um, they will talk about um, the Robin Hood effect, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Um, you will hear other coined soundbite phrases that deal with um, transferring of wealth from one group of individuals to another. In the case of Social Security, we are transferring wealth from the working class to the non-working class or the retired class. When we talk about unemployment, we're transferring wealth from, again, employed individuals to non-employed individuals. When we talk about um, social services such as WIC or AFDC or welfare checks, we are 